Hi friends, my name is Jenna. I'm a full-time traveler who practically lives out of a suitcase. Recently, I went to St. Louis to find the most beautiful and bizarre things in the city. Things might get a little weird. Come travel with me. just made it to St. Louis, Missouri. I have been here one time before, but it was for literally one shift. I came in the morning, did my shift, and then left that same day. So I didn't really get any time to explore. Today I do. So I'm just gonna kind of take you around to some of the best places to eat, things to do in this little city. Um, yeah, let's uh, first stop breakfast. All right guys, I just finished up with breakfast. I don't even know if you can call that breakfast. It was more like lunch. Um, so I went to this place called Union Loafers. Apparently it's really good, really good breakfast. But they only had the, the lunch menu out. I didn't want to leave. I was already there and the bread smelled really good. They, they hand make the bread each day. So I ordered a lunch special. I didn't really like it. <laughs> I got a cold brew and there wasn't really any flavor or sugar in it. I got like a wild rice soup. It was super citrusy for some reason. I don't know if it was just my taste buds or just funky, but it just tasted very lemony orangey and I was not a fan of that. Um, the sandwich was good actually. Um, it was kind of basic, but the bread is like super good, especially because they had make it there. But yeah, I, I think it was just because maybe I was expecting breakfast food that I was disappointed. And then of course when I was leaving, the lady I was asking somebody who was coming in, oh are you here for lunch or brunch? I didn't know that there was an option. <laughs> so yeah, next time I'll just ask the person before ordering. <laughs> But now I'm gonna do a little bit of sightseeing. Let's get down to it. My first stop in St. Louis was the St. Louis Union Station. And although there were trains here, it was less of a train station and more of just like this giant activity center. I was practically the only one there, which was so surprising given how beautiful the place was on such a beautiful day, but I went inside to the St. Louis Aquarium for one of the best aquarium experiences I have ever had. Your journey starts off on a train that takes you through St. Louis's history. There was so many different animals here, and there was a lot to do for kids as well. I had to take part in some of the kids' activities, but there was just a really good mix for people of all ages. I got to touch a jellyfish, which was awesome because I am obsessed with them. Overall, this aquarium is probably one of the most interactive aquariums I have ever been to. After the aquarium, I headed downtown to one of the most iconic monuments in St. Louis. I'm at the Arch, crazy National Monument. 
does look a lot different depending on where you stand. Uh, but yeah, it, it is beautiful. By then, I was absolutely starving, so I headed over to the Italian quarter called The Hill, where I stopped by a place called Zia on the Hill. Did you know that baked raviolis originated in St. Louis? After eating some of the best Italian food ever, I checked into my hotel, which had a wonderful view of the city and the monument. I'm at City Museum. I parked like four blocks away and then I realized they had parking here and it's gonna be late whenever I get out of here so I was like might as well just move my car now uh, and they made me pay ten dollars for ten minutes of parking and the guy sweet guy I told him about it here and he said just go ahead and park so that's nice. City Museum is less of a museum and more of just the most wild playground you will ever see in your entire life. Though kids are allowed, I don't think that this place is actually meant for kids. One second you'll be in an aquarium, and the next you are diving deep into Ursula's cave full of tiny holes and slides. I'm terrified right now. And just when you think you get out of the cave, you find yourself in a room full of ladders and slides and an organ? I do not have a fear of heights. I'm sweating profusely. I'm going up to, I guess, the 10 story slide. Why? I don't know. I hate myself, I guess. Y'all, when they say it's a 10 story slide, they actually mean it is a 10 story slide. It is terrifying and it makes you really dizzy. So if you have fear of heights and get nauseous easy, maybe just skip this one. After the slide, I found myself in another cave room full of teeny tiny holes. Oh my god. Why did I bring a big old bag in here with me? If you are at all claustrophobic, maybe don't do this part. <laughs> it just smells like feet. You can go even further in. I'm just gonna take this way out. Okay, this is really fun and cool. It's like a big adult playground. And I'm gonna come back down here. There's like so much to do. They don't have any maps, so you just kind of have to explore on your own. And I like that kind of. I'm definitely like a plan planner person, but the unknown is. Look at how insane some of these crawl spaces are. It's literally like two or three of my hand. If that's not your speed, there's a lot of other stuff you can do in the city museum. One turn you're looking at a giant centipede or underwear, and then the next you're in a regular museum. It's wild. But probably one of the craziest things is the outdoor play area. That goes many, many stories high. And yes, it is actually made out of real airplane scraps, and it's crazy. <laughs> the footage just does not do justice how high up this feels. It is terrifying. This is probably one of the scariest things I've ever done in my entire life. So I was just all the way up there. Fine. I don't know why I did that and then I made the mistake of trying to go down this like wire bar thing and I literally slipped down and my butt hurts so bad but this is fun I'm gonna go and try I tried to find like a way to get down to the castle and I could not find a way at all <laughs> now I finally found a way to get over there so. the only bad part is like parts of it get really dark and your ground is made up of barbed wire. It's kind of scary. <laughs> made it to the top of the castle. And I just realized you can just go through the plane, <laughs> which is easier to get to, but that's okay. I made it the hard way. And the cool thing about this museum is like, you can choose the hard way or you can just take the stairs. I think I'm done taking the hard way because my butt still hurts. Oh my 
bin. How am I supposed to fit there? This little bitty hole. <laughs> I'm the queen now. I cannot believe there's more stuff to do up on the roof. I'm gonna go there now. On the rooftop, you will find a Ferris wheel and a praying mantis slide. And yes, it is very, very high up. But one of the most peculiar things is the school bus that hangs off the side of the building. And there's a little bit of a surprise. I decided that I needed a drink and I also needed some pizza and dang this was good pizza for a museum then I watched a little acrobatic show and went back up to the roof to relax and watch the night sky to get one last slide in. <laughs> guys I am about to head back it's already almost nine o'clock they close at 10 but I am exhausted from all of that climbing around I had so much fun I felt like a kid again I felt like I was committing many crimes walking out on some of those it gave like construction site vibes I don't know if that makes sense like everything was just metal and grates and I did not feel like I was supposed to be up there but it was so much fun I think my butt hurts from all of the skidding on the slides um, and on accidentally on one of the like climbing things Ugh, that was such a bad idea going down that but I love this place if you were in st louis this is like a must you have to come here i'm waiting for my phone to charge because it died and i need it to get directions home so i just thought i would pop on and just say how much i love this place right i have zero idea how i did this but somehow i made it back without a gps this is something i have zero sense of direction i cannot tell you wh which way is north i'm sorry like especially at night time i have zero idea and my phone i sat in the parking lot of the city museum for like 15 20 minutes waiting for my phone to charge because it died and i got it to 10 percent and as soon as i made my first turn the phone died i was already on the on the street and St. Louis, like there's not really any place to pull in or park unless you want to pay. Obviously, I learned my lesson the hard way and paid $10 for a 10 minute parking. Um, and so I was like, okay, I know I'm on Forest Park Avenue, 50 50 chance, east or west, I've got zero clue. And I picked west and drove for like 10 minutes and I saw Forest Park Avenue. And then I realized I had no idea. Like, it did not look familiar at all. So I just kept driving. I was like, hopefully I made the right turn. But then I realized I had, I was coming from the other side, not like the side that I usually came from work. The, um, hold on, let me show you. I literally saw, I was about to turn around. I was like, this is not it. The only reason that I didn't turn around was because in front of me, I saw this 
light. And I remember seeing this thing out my window because it kept me up all night once. And honestly, thank you, Clayco, because it, without you, I would literally be lost in St. Louis still.